Spooky, spooky, very spooky. Oh no, it's a monster. Spooky, spooky, very spooky. If you don't know what the entity is, it's considered the ghost movie. Now don't confuse that with Ghost Dad starring Bill Cosby. 20th Century Fox presents the story of Carla Moran, the most extraordinary case in the history of psychic research. Everything broke loose and went crazy and everything was shaking, the bed was shaking and the walls were shaking. I'm joined here by a celebrity reviewer today. We have Charlie Harper oh. from Two and a Half Men. Oh, and, uh, and it's nice to join you guys in Cinema Gold, and we're actually drinking these... Uh, He's, uh, we call them time of the months, is what we call them. Time of the months, and we were, it's made with this new vodka that my, uh, my 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 sister company's working on. Oh, they're fabulous, John. Just fabulous. Cheers. Cheers. What did you think of this movie? Well, uh, the reason that I'm here, John, is because I heard there was some boobage going on in this movie. <laughs> uh, I imagine, to my surprise, uh, there, there actually was some Barbara Hershey uh, boobage in this movie. When they, I, I'll tell you right now, Barbara Hershey's nudity gave me the Hershey squirts. We'll say, oh yeah. Well, I enjoyed seeing Barbara's bush. And I'm, oh. not, I'm not talking about the first lady either. Oh, oh my God. That's a strong time of the month. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, You're hanging out with Charlie Harper now. Don't be a pussy, that's, Josh. That's true. <laughs> All right. This movie was kind of a shock. Oh, my God. It, this was like uh, hanging out with Charlie Harper. Uh, you never know what's going to stick up your ass at any minute. You never I mean, know what's going to happen, John. You never know. It's got a sensitive subject. It deals with... You just have to put that out there. Um, you know, just get your whistle and be ready for some intense fucking in this movie right from the get go. It, it does not hold anything back. We looked over six minutes into this movie. Some a ghost is fucking throwing people across the room, splitting their legs open and the shit out of them. No waiting, no setup, just happens right at the beginning of the movie. It's just crazy. It did really start up really fast, and I was thinking, oh, this is going to be a shorter one, because it just starts out, like, at the first few minutes. But no, this movie keeps going, and it keeps going. It ratchets up that tension. It ratchets up that just terrifying atmosphere in a brilliant, brilliant Barbara Hershey performance. I thought it was fantastic. For the sure. Movies. Barbara Hershey is excellent, and it really sells the intensity of the moments when she's being attacked by the ghost. Oh! I oh! <laughs> oh! Time of the month again. Time of the month again. Ended a little softer than I wanted to, but boy! Boy! It started this movie hard! Tense. It sure started hard! Oh this movie was tense. This yeah. movie was fucking tense. It Insane. Was. Yeah, especially for, you know, two guys who had never seen this movie. It really caught us off guard to some degree. Um, we weren't sure if it was going to be like one or two moments in this movie where the scene happens and that's what all the shock is about in this movie. It continues to happen all throughout the movie. It I mean, does. it's not a one-time thing in this movie. Jaw on the floor. Yeah. The yes, like, we really holy were. Shit. I no mean, matter how many times it happens, every yeah. time you're like, whoa. Expect in some horror movies, oh, when it gets a little quiet or everything seems too safe, that's when the yes. the scary moment's going to happen. But they don't really use the typical jump scare element, but they still get an effective jump scare out of you when this thing appears out of nowhere and starts punching people in the mouth and splitting their legs apart. And well, up sort the of ass. the template for uh, jump scares, isn't it? It's kind of like this isn't a jump scare, but people will, will will look at something like this and be like, "Oh, see what they did? See that effect? Let's use that, and we'll just and they'll call it a jump scare. It's a musical cue. This movie's got some fucking crazy music." My heart was pounding in this movie, like on multiple occasions. Yeah. Like, well, and that's what the score sounds like. It's like a pile driver pounding. You know, it's this. It's really intense and crazy. The first time it happened, I wasn't sure if that was the sound of the ghost in the, the bed pounding against yeah. the wall. It, it almost seems like that's kind of what it's mimicking, even yeah. though it's maybe a little distasteful, but take it from Wild Thing Ricky Vaughn here, he knows his rough sex, and that sound definitely added to that. Movie. And he knows tasteful, that's for sure. I definitely know tasteful. You better <laughs> believe it, man. You can just ask Jana Jameson, man. That was the most romantic day to her hey, life. Hey, how's your uh, glass of AIDS tasting? <laughs> <laughs> Tastes just like Altoid Blue Job, John. <laughs> Let's talk about the script of this movie. It was so great. It yeah. was so refreshing that like people are not fucking morons. They 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 establish the realism of how when someone's trying to process this, maybe they don't want to tell people. Mm -hmm. But then so this happens so many times with movies, whether it's a horror movie or not that you and I watch, we always come back to this like tell somebody. 
just just break it down for people and tell like, them the truth. And characters in this do it when they feel it's the time to do it, and 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 it kept happening over and over again. Where we're like, yes. So the, the, tell them the initial setup of this movie. You yeah. Know? Well, there there isn't a whole pretty lot. Pretty much did. It's ghost straight. Yeah. That's there it. isn't a whole lot of setup, but essentially, yeah. Barbara this... Hershey has a son who uh, could be her uh, father. Well, that part is hard to explain. <laughs> well, no, her they family... said she had a kid when she was fifteen. Yeah, but her whatever. family dynamic from the beginning of the movie, you might be a little bit confused about who is this woman, how old is she, and who are these people in her life. They eventually. She looks like she's twenty one. Well, and I think a, a lot like what you're saying is the the script. Sometimes we were kind of questioning, well, what's going on here? Why doesn't this person speak up and say this? Why don't they tell the truth in this moment? But then eventually it gets there. Eventually that person does speak up, or yes. eventually that person says the right thing at the right moment. Yes. So that's what impressed us that the script finally gets there. But yeah, you have some of those moments where you're watching it, questioning, well, why doesn't this person do something different in this moment? Totally agree. Charlie, totally agree. Yes. It was a smart script. It was a really interesting script. I guess this is based on a true story. I'd be interested to kind of search out and see what parts of this really seem to be you the true pervert. story and what are. You pervert. Um, we certainly saw how this could influence things like films like The Conjuring. Um, we even saw how maybe this helped influence something like Poltergeist or the Ghostbusters to some degree. Um, there's... I definitely have Ghostbusters vibes when they meet those uh, uh, parapsychologists. Yeah, Isn't yeah. a fucker that looks like Egon. Yeah, um, and I, I really enjoyed that segment of the film Me until too. we get to our final climax. And we both kind of uh, felt that the climax got a little convoluted and didn't really yeah. hold up to the tension building of the, the initial... Uh, first two thirds of the film, and then by the the final act, um, they just go a little over the top with the paranormal uh, parapsychologists uh, trying to to capture the ghost to some degree, and it just wasn't really believable. <clears throat> didn't make a whole lot of sense, and and kind of ended on a, a little bit of a sour note where we were let down by how great the first two thirds of the film would, really were. Would you agree that the movie felt like it was micro budgeted, and then when the third act came? they came into like $5 million that they weren't expecting. Apparently. Like, Let's make the end huge. Like, cause it didn't fit the rest of the movie. Well, yeah. Like you kept talking about her apartment being so small and yeah, the, the, and then all of a sudden they're like, let's make this giant gymnasium, this big science experiment with these special effects. And you're like, what? No, yeah. it's such a, it, the, the scariness is just that it's just her and her house. And she's got little kids and, and these brutal moments instead of this science fiction, kind of moment at the yeah, end. That, I didn't, that I didn't like really... it at all. The inevitable outcome of the film, you know, it's hard to tell what's real and what's just based on the story. And sometimes that works in a movie and sometimes it doesn't like, you don't know what liberties they take. You don't know what they're adding to make it more a large scale. Like we said, the ending of this Pretty movie sure is the probably gymnasium all was bullshit. Added. The camera is just dead set and so close on Barbara Hershey when she's talking to her friends, when she's mm -hmm. talking to her psychologist. It's, they're very extreme close-up shots of her yes. every time she's talking. Yeah, and that, and then you can only be, you have to be a good actress to do that. You can't totally. get away with it otherwise. Um, I saw shades of, of Ripley in her, like her strength and, and even kind of the way she sounded. And her panties, um, the same panties, the little butt crack and yeah. stuff. When when Ripley, changes. I think that was just a popular choice for late seventies, early eighties panties. I am all for it. I like you, you, the easier all they are to peel off, the better for me. Of course, Run when she's harps. being violated in this movie a number of times. She's laid spread naked across the bed, and they do some amazing effects with her body. And I'll let you talk about it in specific, because I'm pretty sure uh, you helped out with these effects, right, Charlie? Well, I, I've got to admit, I wish I did. I blame this little sucker down here. This little, this is the entity right here. He's the one that got his fingers dirty, if you know what I'm saying. This movie, it deals with harsh subject matter. It's hard to, to, hard to stomach, but at the same time, you're very, like... Wow, this is really this is done really really well, for, and it, which looks to be like such a small budget. And I'm thinking 1982, how'd they pull this off? Who the fuck knows? I have no idea. The answer: Stan Winston. Stan Winston made those boobs look so realistic. Ah, he's awesome, man. He's awesome. R.I.P. Stan.